Bitch, every night for hell is what it is, what it do. Just Bobby Ingram, Curtis Ennis. Know that we've been loyal even when we wasn't winning. But trust is source for the news. Ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? Welcome back to another edition of Seven at the Hallows, episode 214. 214. We are live from Soldier Field when we got the great idea from Jason Leisure, Adam Hogue, Adam Johns to use an empty suite because why not? We'll go home tired of shit after not feel like recording. Don't y'all feel get like the, y'all get the podcast on Tuesday night and shit. Like we already on our next game and shit. So we wanted to get tired. better with that. Yeah. So we're recording. Bears. Oh my god, Bears lost. Seven game losing streak. Twenty five twenty. I'm so sad. Crying tears of Jalen Carter and Will Anderson. Cry, crying tears of third pick. Crying tears possibly of possibly second. Crying tears of a trade back. It doesn't get any better than a good quality tank loss. Quality off. tank loss. I mean, what I'm talking about quality is because Bears down two scores. They're gonna lose, but you know what? Let's get it. Close. Justin goes to the to the uh, locker room, not feeling good. Find out it's just cramps. And by the way, homeboy MD, I called it. I said it was cramps when it happened. I had no. This was just an educated guess. I had no fucking idea. It's interesting. This nigga was hoping. I don't know. I think it's cramps. I think it's cramps. <laughs> it's, cramps. it's just because uh, um, you, when you have cramps. The first thing, like, it just feels like your leg is just missing, it just, and everything just seizes up. I didn't assume it was the ankle because of how he was holding himself, and I didn't assume it was um, a severe injury. I thought maybe he. I thought it was hamstring or cramp. I didn't think it was knee. So, but then when you, in hindsight, you say, "Oh yeah, the way he's grabbing his leg like that, it's a cramp." Um, comes back and then leads the Bears on a nice little score. Good touchdown pass to Byron Pringle. I mean, when he has that Patrick Mahomes quality, and I use this very carefully, when the play breaks down, that's where he's most dangerous. You know, Patrick Mahomes is great when the play is fine. Don't get me wrong. But when the play breaks down, it's like terror in your eyes because you know I'm going to find somebody. And as soon as Pringle opens, like, oh, we see him. It's interesting. We are in – it doesn't matter if you're in the press box or you're in the stands. It's the same thing. You see the play – it's like, it's like playing Madden. You yeah. see everything. So, of course, sometimes with fans, it's, it's easier for us to say, and journalists like ourselves, like, oh, man, somebody was open. But it's different when you're on the field and you have to make precise decisions and you have to look your head up while also making sure you're not looking at the 300-pound man who runs a 4-4 coming at you. And you saw Byron Pringle got a nice little touchdown, got them in uh, within it, five is points. It, is it Byron or Byron? Byron? Is it Byron or Brian? Bobby Schmurter. Um <laughs> So, uh, that's a quality loss. Yeah, quality loss. And, I don't know, as a Bears team, I I asked the question of Flus, and he gave a really good answer. I said, your season's over. Your team is terribly injured. What are you playing for? What is your goal? And he said, championship habits. And I thought that was a good answer because not every coach appreciates moral victories or take a good feeling out of it. But if I'm coach of the Bears, I still have a good feeling after all these games because these games have not been blowouts. Nah. Even the team who did a, who did the Bears the worst offensively, the, the Dolphins. Um, no, I'm saying who did the Bears. Like, uh, who scored them a lot? The okay. Dolphins. The Bears still kept pace with them. Yeah. You can't be – you can't do better than what you're doing right now offensively. And defensively, you're taking the number one team in the league who has put up 40 regularly, who dominates, and you made them look human. Jalen Hurts, you're going to see 300 yards passing, but – don't let that confuse you. Yeah, this was Jalen Hurd's first Huff game of the year, in my opinion. Yeah. Like, I feel like you'll, you'll see three rushing touchdowns. Like, oh, my goodness. Only one of those rushing touchdowns was actually a true rushing touchdown. I feel like there needs to be another category when you just sneak it in. Like, Tom Brady has a lot of sneak touchdowns in his career, or a lot of sneaks to get first downs in his career. But it's just they're, the Eagles' offensive line, man, they are freaking tough. And Both of their lines. Both of their lines. The defensive line is tough. They sacked Justin, what, six times a day? Um, About four. No, six. It was six times. It was six times. It was in six. It was five in the first half. It was six sacks. It was 100% six sacks. How much you want to bet? No, I don't know. Exactly. Don't know. I'm confident it was six sacks. I know. You're too confident. Yeah. What you makes you want to do about uh, it? Six sacks. Uh, and the good thing about this defense for the Eagles is like, it's not a lot of big names on there, but they're disciplined. You yep. know what I'm saying? They know what they need to do. Um, the offensive line, as we expected, was not good and got even worse when Tevin Jenkins left. 
And we, I'm, I got Tevin Jenkins later on the rundown. But I actually want to start with what we thought about Justin's game. Justin went 14 with 21 and 153 uh, yards passing, two touchdowns. One was a garbage time TP. But if y'all going to count his garbage time interception, we're going to count his garbage time touchdown. That's fair. So we're going to do that. Um, and it was actually a close game well, they, when, they, when they kicked it back. So I really you can't call it a garbage game. game. It was a close game the entire game. Yeah, you can't call it a garbage time touchdown because when they kicked it, it was 240-something. On top the of that, they have three touchdowns. That 240 is a whole that's a, that's a whole different year. So, so we can't even call garbage time touchdowns. Two touchdowns um, at 95 yard, rushing yards became the third quarterback in NFL history joining Michael Vick and Lamar Jackson uh, to rush for 1,000 yards. 1,000 on the mark. 1,000 on the mark. Um, he's definitely going to pass Vick's record. He's not going to touch Lamar. Lamar had 1,200. Boy, he's going to pass Vick for sure, I believe. In these Three next games. Couple games. Yeah. Three games. I don't think it's only going to be two. I don't think he's going to play the finale. That's true. That's I don't true. think this uh, – Minnesota has nothing that's going to really have nothing to play for, really. Um, well, I won't say actually Minnesota might. They're only a game up on uh, the Niners for the number two seed. So that game might mean something for them so they can have home field advantage, at least through the, inter- through the NFC Championship game. So it might. So Justin might play the game. I don't know. I would sit him regardless. Yeah. But – um, either way, man, you know, it was, a, it was a panic when he left the game, but I thought Justin is looking good. Um, and really passing-wise, I think he's getting better and better each week, even though the, the sidearm touchdown to Demo was great because, as you saw earlier, man, that's not his strongest thing. And he got he's getting better at that. And what's even more impressive when he was really throwing to nobody out there. Like, you know, you had Mooney, of course, we know he's already out. Claypool is, is out um, with a knee injury. Flutes did, did say he expects him to come back. Uh, before the regular season ends, so who knows, that might be Saturday. Um, and then EQ left the game with a concussion yeah. after making a big 20-yard catch. Yeah. And I saw him in the hallway. That boy looked like he ain't know what planet he was on. So I don't think he's going to play Saturday um, against the Bills. It, so It's funny because I expected this to be his biggest game. I'm not saying he's going to get 100 yards. No, but, but I like thought – Like 60, 70 yeah. yards because clearly he's the best receiver left. So I wasn't shocked uh, that, you know, he had a big play or that the ball was going to him. I assumed this was going to be his game. And then seeing him go out, that, that, that sucks to see. Um, but and in concussions, I'm at least happy that the NFL is taking it a little more seriously. I mean, because after Tua and that uh, that uh, horrifying, whatchamacallit, injury where, you know, his hands were up in the air and he just was looking dazed and confused, I'm glad that they took the time. Even with Kyler and Jaquan Briscoe, it sucks that they were out. But at the same time, you would want them to get their their literal literal head right before they step on the football field. So I'm not upset that uh, you know they had that they had to sit, and I'm not upset that EQ might have to sit because get healthy is really the only thing. And if I, you know, my assumption when I asked Flus what was his goal for the rest of the season was get healthy. You know, I assumed his goal was going to be to remain healthy, stay healthy, and to not have too many injuries. But, you know, that was just my assumption. But what did you think of Justin's whole game in general? Um, I thought it was good, not great. Now, bear in mind, he only threw the ball 21 times. Um, and it's not really shocking, really, when you're dealing with the talent that he has on the field and does not have on the field. Your number one receiver was EQ coming into the game. And then after that, you have... Valus Jones, Byron Pringle, Nassimba Webster, Cole Komet. Cole Komet has got the Jason Wooden, which is I catch the ball. He's got no speed. I catch the ball immediately, and that is it. Um, For him to get a little burst of speed, he needs a big windup. So I would say good. I would probably, if this is a GPA, you get a 3.0. Not a 4.0, though, because there were a few, every bubble screen, the pass was in the dirt. and that's something you have to work on as a QB. That's automatic. Jalen Hurts threw very good bubble screens. Um, when they were in their own end zone, it was third and ten, and the Bears decided to rush everyone up the middle beyond me. I usually, if I'm that, if I'm a coach, I'm sitting in cover two, or I'm going to have a, a flat zone and I'm going to blitz somebody. But, you know, I'm also not an NFL coach. I don't know what the decisions that they make. Um, and when that bubble screen happened, beautiful, right off the line, dumped it to them. You know, Justin wants to throw that pass where, you know, you zip it and you run, but you don't always have the time to throw that. So he missed three passes like that. 14 to 21 means he missed seven passes. Three of them were like that. One of them could have been a pick, but I don't think it would have been a pick in any situation because it just the, – the cornerback wasn't in the position to get yeah. it. It was just close. Um, one was dropped, um, and I can't account for the other two. The passes that he made, they were good passes. They were good reads. 
Um, there was only one play where I thought he should have launched it, and that was Velas being open. Would Velas have caught it? No. And that's the difference between Justin Fields' team and Jalen Hurts. Five of Jalen Hurts' passes were, A.J. Brown is there, I'm going to launch it. And that's what you do when you have a good receiver. How many times did you see Aaron Rodgers do that with uh, Devontae Adams? It's anticipation throw. It's not like anticipation throw. It's I trust my service yeah. to make a play. And Jalen had no receiver today that I would do that with. Not doing it with Byron Pringle. You mean I'm, Justin had no receiver. I'm sorry, Justin <laughs> had no receiver that I would that he would do that with. And so he had to open your open eyes to try. And, you know, he tried to find some plays from Cole Komet. And Cole Komet called him. He just he ain't, he ain't quick enough. Yeah. <laughs> you know, two, two players who I thought could have been first and the second one probably the first one caught first. First one could have been a touchdown. Been a touchdown. Yeah, if he had some speed. I mean, yeah. And I think but at the same thing, time, 60, over 60, 60 something, 3% completion rating. Um, touchdown, two touchdowns passing. Rushing, obviously. They're the best rushing attack in the league. You know, they did. He did great. Um, so I think. I, I think the importance of that was they threw no picks, and this is the team that leads the league in interceptions against quarterbacks. So um, that was big, and just you know, it's just seeing the progression. I think the Justin most has the most picks in the league. No, it's about the, the Eagles defense. Oh, Eagles defense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like really? No, nah, Justin only has ten interceptions, uh, fifteen touchdowns now, and ten interceptions. Uh, we should have a chance to get to the 20 mark. Need that. Just get five more. Just, just get five more in these next two, three games so my agenda can rise. But I think the thing that you can see and be confident as a Bears fan is, I tweeted this in the, in the second quarter, there's no quarterback in the NFL who's doing more with at with, with, uh, least right now. You know, with less right now. I said least. Less right now. And if he's doing this with these guys, and when he gets some legitimate weapons, the sky's the limit. Even Joe's in the post game. No, I don't plan on rushing for a thousand yards every year. This guy's a passer. He's rushing because he has to. He's doing that out of necessity. So I really love what I saw from Justin. Man, that's just really the only thing. Like, imagine what this season would have been like if we had no Justin Fields to watch. Like, it would have been more brutal than 2017 when they won three games. So just to have that, it, it keeps you. It keeps the fan base something to watch each week. And that's all that you can really ask for. Now, I want to talk about the defense. Defense did great. I thought the defense was going to get shredded. I was expecting 45 points, especially the way Jalen and this Eagles offense has been playing. They held it down. Uh, do not let the 181 yards of, of uh, A.J. Brown fool you. It was a battle. Uh, A.J. Brown even tipped his cap to him in the postgame. I thought Jalen Johnson did a pretty good job. Jalen Jones did a good job. Jaquan Briscoe and Kyler Gordon ain't played in weeks. They came back fresh off concussions. Jaquan has been phenomenal all year, but remember Kyler was, was was having a lot of rookie mistakes early, and a lot of, you know, Bears fans, they're panicky. They was like, well, well that was a waste of a draft pick. Da, da. He has bounced back in such a major way, and I think what's even more impressive is the dude is playing nickel. He didn't even play that in college, so he, he's going to be the number two eventually, but he played well, got an interception today. Um, DHC played well. He It was just overall what I, what I loved from the defense. Jack Sambo, before he got hurt, played well, too. And uh, it was just a really impressive showing to hold this high scoring defense. My offense only 25 points. What did you think? Um, I thought they did a good job considering everything. I mean, I'm not sure they had a linebacker left when Matt Adams went out. He came back in, I believe. Yeah, came back in. When Matt Adams went out, I said, they might have one more linebacker left and you might have to put some safeties up there. Yeah. Um, so that being considered, I thought they did the best of their ability. Holding that team to 25 points. Um, they gave up some big plays, um, really three or four that I can think of. But a team like that, I mean, that's a very talented Eagles team. You know, that's more talented than the Super Bowl winning team. Are they going to win? No. Yeah, well, yeah. Talent-wise, maybe. You know, Talent-wise, I don't know if the Eagles team. I think the Eagles defense of 2017 is more talented than this one. Offense, this is certainly a better offense. Yeah, it's certainly a better offense. Now, bear in mind, that's a season where Carson went to 33 touchdowns. Yeah, but they had course. like Nelson Aguilar and like dudes like Alshon that. Jeffrey. Alshon Jeffrey. We got Devontae Smith, A.J. Brown. Yeah. Uh, I forgot the running Miles back. Miles Sanders. Miles Sanders. Uh, Jalen Hurts, all better than the people we just mentioned. So, talented wise, they're, this is one of the most talented Eagles teams I've seen probably since McNabb and T.O. And uh, who was uh, the running back? Westbrook? Yep. So, Brian Westbrook. This is an ultra talented team. Um, and I salute the Bears defense for standing up to that powerful team and still doing their best and still holding it down because they still did good. Um, yeah, you know, personally, I'd, I'd give them B minus, C plus um, because 
I'm not gonna say, well, you know, they were depleted. You're still NFL players. You're still professional. So. Yeah. It's probably be minus. Be minus. Be my best thing. Yeah, I think I, I would get that too. And this has just been better from the really the majority of the season before the Packer game, where the wide receivers would just be like open, open, and they would just be like killing them. So I just feel like you know Allen Williams, you got to give him some love. The way that they've adjusted, even just scheme wise, I think it's been something to see over the last couple of weeks, man. Now, the question that all Bears fan, fans have, I think the question that the media has, the question me, you specifically, that we even talked about doing doing the game. Is it time to worry about Cairo Santos? You said something interesting. I think somebody else said this too. Um, I don't know who said it, but there was like, no, it's not time because the same thing happened to Robbie Gold. He got out of it and he's been productive ever since. So that's your overall take on Cairo Santos. No. I mean, this was a – was he Pro Bowl last year? Uh, I think he was. Or if not, he was amongst the league's best kickers. I would not, you know, think overreact. about overreacting. Because, I mean, he kind of fell in your lap. You went from Eddie Pinheiro, who was all right, uh, but he got injured, and then you get Cairo Santos, and Cairo Santos was just solid, yeah. solid. Was this second year or third year with the Bears? Second year. Second year with the Bears. So, why waste that? Because um, Eddie Pinheiro was in 2019 and 2020. So, let him let him, let him, him all work through it. It's not the field goals he's struggling with. It's the extra, extra points. points, yeah. And that could be a mental thing. I don't know. But let him work through it because Robbie Gold, they moved on from Robbie Gold. It was a bad slump. Don't get it wrong. It was a slump. It was a terrible slump. It was a year. It was a season-long slump. But he got out of it, and he's still in the lead to this day, and still a valuable kicker. You still see good as gold tweeted. So no, I, I'd let him work. And if it doesn't work next year, that's a different story. Yeah. Then you have to seriously consider your options. Yeah. So I agree with that. Um, you know, I, he definitely is under surveillance, though. He's definitely under surveillance. But you're right. The same thing happened with Robbie Gold. I know a lot of Bears fans have revisions history about Robbie Gold as well. Get my phone there, brother. Um, huh? Hey, my phone there, brother. No, yeah, I, I'm going to keep this in. I don't care. Uh, there's a lot of revisions history about uh, Robbie Gold. People like, well, the Bears should never let him go. And everybody was killing Robbie when he was going through that slump. So, yes, you got you to gotta go through it. And, yes, like you said, it's just extra points. It's not like he's fucking up on field goals. So, he can get better. Maybe it's a mental thing. But it's definitely something I feel like you got to keep your eye on. I don't think it's something we could just flat out ignore and act like it's not happening. So, um, you know, they asked him, was a, you know, they asked uh, Flutes, was it an injury? He said, not to his knowledge. So it's got to be mental at this point. But um, hopefully that gets better because you need that one. I always say, get your kinks out this year because next year you're going to be expecting to win games. Now, I think that – now, anything can happen. The NFL is a year-to-year to year, year year league, so I'm not going to sit up here and say for sure the Bears won't be a Super Bowl contender next year. But I think my realistic goal is for them to be a playoff contender next year. So there's going to be winnable games. There's going to be important games all year. And if you look at the landscape of the NFC North, yeah, the Vikings will still be competitive. But I really think we're starting to get into an era where it might just be Bears and Lions going at it. Which I never thought I'd say. Well, the Lions are playing well right now. They're staying alive in a wild card hunt. Jared Goff is balling. So it might be one of them type of situations. So next year, these games are going to really matter. So get all your fuck-ups out now. You know what I'm saying? That's why I said it was essential for Jay Le- not Jay- for Justin Fields to play the rest of the season. I know Chicago Bears fans are real panicky. Take him out. Take him out. Like, he's not a five-year-old. This, this is football. He's got to go through it. Like, if he gets hurt, he gets hurt. It's part of the fucking game. Like, even when he got hurt today, people was like, why is he going back in the game? It's a close game. He's running. He's okay. Like, you can't baby him. This is no. football. If there's going to be an injury, there's going to be an injury. Something could happen like Kyler Murray last week. Kyler Murray was just doing a simple run and non-contact injury. Now he's going to miss all the next season. This is the game they signed up to. You can't baby your quarterbacks. I understand. All of this season? Yeah. All the next season. He's going to miss all the next season. That's a, that's a 12-month injury. What did he What did he tear? It's ACL. Yeah, he's gonna yeah, he tore his ACL last week. He's gonna be if, if not all of next season, majority of next, and they're gonna be so ass next year. There's gonna be no point for him to come back four games. Left. So um, that to me is something where I understand we're, 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 we've never had a good quarterback for us, so we're protective of. But you gotta let him play through it, and so you can get these reps. Cause like I was saying, it was cool, it was fun to see him, but it was only six, seven weeks at the time. I want a full body of work so he can get as many reps as, reps as possible so the next season he's more uh, prepared. And that's just something I think we'll be seeing. It's the same thing with Cairo. Get all your mistakes out right now, man. Now, another thing that happened today, a lot of injuries. Uh, we talked about uh, Sam Bourne injury, uh, EQ. The biggest injury today, Tevin Jenkins. It looked like a nasty injury. I didn't see what happened. Justin said he didn't see what happened, but apparently it was a neck injury. He was on the ground for a long period of time as he got carted off off the field. Now, my question for you is, is it, are you worried about Tevin Jenkins? Do you think he's injury prone? 
Because oh. this is a, uh, he's a really good player, but he's one of the cornerstones. If you can't uh, you can't depend on him to be healthy, that's going to be a problem. I don't know. I don't know. You know what to say about that because I mean, which one, those injuries. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's too early for me to say if he's injury prone. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm just going to wait and see because he's had what? This is his second year. Yeah, it's the second season. I'm going to wait and see. Yeah, because he's, he's played one of the last these, of the Ryan Pace picks. Yeah, he's played through his injuries this year, too. So, last year, of course, you know, missed time. So, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I'm with you. It's something you got to keep an eye on because he's a very important part of this offensive line. He's one of the – maybe the only guy on this offensive line that I think, you know, should be here long term. So, you definitely need him healthy, man. Um, last thing we can go on, because, you know, these pods aren't as long as usual because there's really not that much to talk about this team. But last thing I want to talk about – this is a big offseason for the Bears coming up. You know what I'm saying? And this is one thing that after this week in Chicago sports, with all the mediocre basketball the Bulls have been playing, with the Bears, with the, with the Cubs and the White Sox being cheap. Yes, I know the, the White Sox signed Andrew Benatendi. Yes, I know the Cubs signed Dan, Dansby Swanson this week. But if you look at it, Andrew Benatendi now has the highest contract in White Sox history. That's embarrassing. The only reason the Cubs signed... Why are we talking about baseball? No, we're getting to a point. Okay. So, uh, Cubs signed Dansby Swanson. was only because it was on the $200 million. So, you have this week of everybody being upset at all these front offices. Mm-hmm. And so, now with Ryan P- Poles, this is the very most important... I'm going to say the most important offseason in franchise history. And this is why I say that. Because you have your cornerstone quarterback. You finally have that for the first, first time in franchise history. You got $150 million to spend. At the moment, you got nine draft picks. Now, if you trade back, you might have uh, more. You have to be able to set the tone of what... Broncos winning. Okay, that's good. Set the tone of what this franchise is going to be to make sure you're surrounding Justin with the right talent. We don't want to be here three, four years from now when Justin's already paid. By the way, that's another thing, too. When Justin... Uh, his fifth year uh, option is coming up at the end of next season, and then we have to pay him $30, $40 million a year, and that's going to take up a lot of your cap. You need to have a, a nice foundation around him so he can win games. You don't want a situation that we have in Baltimore right now where I feel Lamar Jackson is not being handled the way he should be handled. One, he should be paid already. Two, they didn't, he, he, he has no receivers, none. We, none whatsoever. He said, I need help, and they got this man Deshaun Jackson, the corpse of Deshaun Jackson. So you don't want the same situation. And my question for you is, what do you think that Ryan Poles can learn from Eagles GM Howie Roseman, who this Eagles team was a wild card team last year. They got the ass kicked by the Buccaneers. There was, you know, Jalen Hurts made it huge because I was like, I think a lot of us was like, Hurts and Tua, we was like, I don't know what they're going to be like in both off seasons, both front offices had great off seasons to bring them help. And now Jalen is an MVP candidate and the Dolphins are right in the middle of the AFC wild card chase. What do you think polls can take from Howie Roseman on how to build around Justin? Build him the draft. When there's a big free agent there, throw him the money. It doesn't get any more simple than that. Devonta Smith is built to the draft. Miles Sanders? Yeah, built to the draft. Built to the draft. Jalen Hurts was built to the draft. Your offensive line built to the draft. Then A.J. Brown is the sprinkle on top. Yep. And I think, too, with, you know, we talk about uh, – and we had had a good conversation on Twitter about this a couple of Bears fans. I like when I have a good conversation with Bears fans on Twitter because it doesn't happen a lot. So I appreciate the few times I have it. And we were talking about vet receivers who might be available. Uh, with uh, – with um, what's my man, Kyler Murray being hurt, mm-hmm. and now we just got the news that they're going to be parting ways with their general manager, who was there for a long time. There's a huge possibility that DeAndre Hopkins could be cut, and they don't they don't have a dead cap hit because of his contract. He could be a free agent. He's 30, but he's still playing. He missed he missed uh, seven games this year, and he's already one of the top leaders in the NFL receiving yards and touchdowns. He's still productive. Tom Brady's probably going to go to uh, to Vegas, or he might go back to New England. That boy retiring. I don't think he's retiring. Either way, he's not going to be a Buccaneer next year. He's going to be a free agent. What did I say about Mike Evans? Mike Evans is under contract control for the next couple of years. It might take you some picks, but he's still Mike Evans. And in the T. Higgins situation, you got Joe Burrow, who's probably going to get paid this year, and they got to pay Jamar, um, Jamar, uh, Chase. Jamar Chase. He might be the odd man now. So you're going to have some veteran options there if you don't get in a draft. So really, Poles has just got to strike when he can. Now, I do think we'll know exactly what direction he's going to after free agency. Yeah. Because free agency comes before the draft. Yeah. So there's a lot of things to, to uh, pay attention to. And if you're a Bears fan, I know we just – to me, there's one goal for the rest of the season. Don't win another fucking game. 
get Justin out alive. If you accomplish those two things, you're good. And then when March comes, now that's when the work begins. And we can see how we can shape this team to become a playoff contender for next year. And we can have some meaningful games out here in Soldier Field. I agree. I think I hit the nail on the head. Yeah. I think that's all we got for y'all today. Um, so uh, the Bears have two more home games, but this week will be my final home game for the season uh, against the Buffalo Bills. So it's a quick turnaround. Tuesday will be practice will be on Tuesday this week, so I'll be up there to the flu talk, the Justin talk, and the games will be on Christmas Eve. Um, yeah, man, so we, we almost got a couple more games left, man. So I think that's all we got for y'all this week. You know how to follow us on Twitter at Barbershare. Scott, F. Lowe's, and Alini. Follow 79th and Hallis, 79th A and D. I'm going to keep saying A and D. Y'all don't want to spell Hallis on Twitter uh, at Barbers Chat Net. Subscribe to Patreon, patreon.com backslash Barbers Chat Network. My post game videos on there right now for you to check out. And you can hit up to bcnet.com. And we're approaching our five year anniversary next month for the Barbers Chat Network, man. So look out for that. We out live from Soldier Field.